Welcome to a very, very, very special episode of That 911 Guy. We're looking at the Porsche 911 reimagined by Singer. We all know about the DLS, don't we? The Design Lightweight Study. However, the car we're about to see represents a whole new stratosphere of reimaginings. Singer, as a restoration company, has gone from road cars into the realms of competition. I present to you, therefore, the Porsche 911 reimagined by Singer all-terrain competition study. You're going to be watching this video in 2021. We're actually at the end of 2020 at the point that we're shooting this. The car literally was finished days ago. It's the result of around two years hard work between Singer Vehicle Design in California and also Tuthill Porsche. Based in the UK, they're one of the most renowned names globally for rallying with a Porsche 911. The thesis of this project emanates from a good customer of Singer that wanted a 911 restored, albeit in a competition spec, in order to go rallying. That's the reason this car is quite a spectacular deviation from even the DLS. Key things to rattle off first of all, all of Singer's reimaginings of the Porsche 911 are all based on the 911 from 1989 to 1994. That is the 964 generation. The ACS, which is this car, is once again based on the 964. I don't know about you, but I'm getting lots of 959 and 953 Paris-Dakar vibes when looking at this car. There really is quite a lot of Porsche history instilled into this restoration. It is a competition-based car then, but as you can fully well expect with Singer, everything is important and there are so many details on this car and we're going to try and cover as many as we possibly can for this video we'll start with the body which is carbon fiber and comprises front and rear clamshells which have been designed for quick access to key parts of the vehicle the monocoque itself has undergone core strengthening for heavy off-road use as you can see, the ACS features long travel suspension with double wishbone and five-way adjustable double dampers per corner. The car's wheelbase has also been extended by 98mm over stock, though the rear wheel is in the same position as standard. Track width has been widened to 1600mm front and rear, up from 1380, and those 16-inch forged alloys have been wrapped in Baja all-terrain tyres. Obviously, by the nature of the fact that this is built for off-road use, power does go to all four wheels. It's not actually the four wheel drive system taken from the 964 because by modern standards, that's quite a primitive four wheel drive system. It is a bespoke modern system that's been installed on this Porsche 964. The bespoke system comprises custom front, mid and rear differentials mated to a custom five speed sequential manual dog box with paddles also placed on the steering wheel. In terms of the engine out the back, in a first for Singer, the 964's flat six has been turbocharged. It's running twin turbochargers. The ACS uses the original 964 Carrera's 3.6 litre flat six, albeit with fly-by-wire throttle bodies and two competition spec turbos with ceramic bearings, allowing for a quick spool up and minimal lag. Interestingly, on the subject of turbos generally, Singer tells me they are very much under consideration for its future. In case you're wondering, Due to all the chassis revisions, the flat six now sits 40 millimeters lower and eight millimeters forwards compared to stock. The stated output is 450 horsepower. Of course, that's quite tune dependent. Which is just as well, as there's two full-size spare race wheels and tires on board the ACS, as well as a long range 150 litre fuel tank. Make no mistake, this is no show pony. The ACS is built to do business on a competitive rallying stage. But the beauty of this new study is that it's entirely malleable. The parallax white car you see here is its most extreme iteration, with a second car in Corsica Red, built for the same customer by the way, configured for high speed, high grip tarmac events. But back to ACS01. This car is absolutely dripping 
in tiny, tiny details that add up too, as you can see. A spectacular picture. So many, in fact, that we lost light before we'd finished filming, which forced us to go up the road to Tut Hills, a very apt location for this special car. Now, as you might expect, the evolution from crafting a beautiful road-going car into a vehicle equipped for competition, it's quite a leap forward, isn't it? Even for a company like Singer and the capabilities that Rob Dickinson and his team have. So, in order to complete this car, Rob enlisted in the help of Richard Tuthill, who, as we well know, is the master of taking the Porsche 911 rallying with notable success. We're talking no less than four outright victories on the East African Safari, the latest being in 2019. So, Richard and his team are exactly the kind of people who you want building a beautiful reimagined Porsche 911 such as this. And under the rear end, obviously, where you would find the flat six engine in a Porsche 911, we see the 964's flat six with some pretty ingenious reworking. Individual bank charge coolers are housed within the intake plenum atop the engine, which themselves are cooled by an oil to water radiator mounted on the clamshell. I think that's such a beautiful example of engineering with the space you've given in the 911. Obviously, there's not a lot of that. While we've got the rear clamshell up as well, you can see twin dampers. This car has no less than eight dampers. It's two on each corner. We all know Singer are famous for its attention to detail. The Porsche script might look completely normal from a distance, but when you get up close, you can see that actually the top half, as you'll see on all the ACS logo on this car, is recessed and the bottom half sticks out. It's the sort of detail you'd walk past a thousand times and not see unless it's pointed out to you. Moving around to the front, again, twin damping, as I say, beautiful to look at, aren't they? It's a lovely, lovely detail. Moving up to the top of the clamshell, this incidentally is an old 911 badge, recognisable from its old Porsche script and the orange rather than red colouring on the emblem. Then to the right or left of the crest, you've got these headlights. They're the most expensive headlights going for a Porsche 911. You may well recognise them, particularly motorsport fans amongst you. The reason is they are from this season's 991 GTE spec motorsport cars from Visac. Let's take a look inside. Lovely. It's incredibly purposeful for what this car was built for, and that is competitive rallying. There's a state-of-the-art GPS race navigation system, plus a rehydration system for driver and navigator, an FIA spec roll cage, and two custom competition seats with FIA certification. A long hydraulic handbrake sits next to a DLS-inspired transmission tunnel, and the bespoke Momo steering wheel also looks to have had DLS influence. Incredibly, despite the extra turbo parts, all-wheel drive, full cage and six heavy tyres, the ACS weighs 1,350 kilos, the same as a stock 964C2. And there we have it, that is about it. That is our first look, and admittedly a fairly quick look, at the Porsche 911 reimagined by Singer ACS all-terrain competition study. As we know, the whole safari style and Baja spec movement of the Porsche 911, certainly recreationally speaking, has just blown up in popularity, hasn't it, over the past couple of years. This, for me, is way above all of that. For start, it's a genuine competition car and it melds two of the biggest names in the industry. At the time of filming, there's no word on price yet. Certainly in terms of build numbers, this isn't a limited production run or anything like that. If your desire is great enough and probably your pocket's deep enough, then you can have one of these cars. My take on this is it's the most outrageous restoration yet of a Porsche 911. It's a vehicle that absolutely defines the safari genre for me. I don't know about you, but I cannot wait to see it in action. It's gonna be some vehicle.